Hello folks, my name is Dave. Welcome to my shop. This is a 1949 Chevrolet 3100 pickup. That's a 216 cubic inch engine. What I'm going to do today is replace the uh, that uh, pushrod gallery side cover gasket. This is the third time that I've replaced that gasket. The first time is when I removed and replaced the head to get the engine running about three years ago. Second time was uh, last year when uh, I discovered that the uh, oil line to the uh, rocker uh, shafts had uh, had come apart there behind the oil gallery pan from where uh, it had inadvertently rubbed against the uh, push rods and I wasn't getting any oil to the uh, rocker arm so I had to replace that line. Wished I would have done a, uh, a video of that because that's a fairly common uh, problem. Uh, not so much with the line uh, uh, breaking, but with it getting plugged with crud over years. And uh, uh, there's a full kit, they're available online, and uh, it, everything was with it and it worked fine, and it's been working great. But uh, when I replaced them both times, this, this support rod here that uh, holds the uh, so support for the fender, uh, I left it uh, intact and uh, had to work around it. In both cases, it made the job so much uh, tougher. So this time, uh, I'm going to remove that rod. Uh, and also, in order to gain access to the pan to remove and replace it, I'm going to remove the coil, the valve cover, uh, and all the uh, distributor cap and all the uh, spark plug leads. And then I believe I can work around the uh, draft tube, the fuel pump, and uh, the base of the distributor. I'm also going to, I may have to disconnect the fuel line down here at the fuel pump and loosen it at the carburetor in order to swing it out of the way. But I may be able to just move it out of the way, I can't remember. Uh, same for the vacuum line, I may have to, uh, to disconnect it and loosen it and swing it also. Otherwise, it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, Working around this rod, uh, getting that uh, pan in there, uh, I'm sure is uh, it calls me the knock or, or, or nick that gasket down there in the corner, uh, right by the starter. And I've got, uh, once the engine warms up and I get a good flow of oil from the head back down through the gallery to the crankcase, uh, I start leaking. Uh, at first I thought it was the rear main and then uh, I repl actually replaced uh, the main and uh, and it didn't uh, didn't stop the leak, and I can see it's really oily and moist there, uh, right by the starter on the block by the bell housing. So I'm pretty sure that I must have damaged that uh, gasket trying to get this pan on around this rod. So it's coming out. Uh, one thing that you have to uh, keep in mind when you replace these gaskets on the two sixteens is you've got these six cork gaskets that go around the plug openings and that seals that to keep oil from uh, getting into the uh, plugs or around the plugs and possibly causing them to short or a leak anyway. So you need to put some sort of sealer on that will hold those on. Same for this gasket while you maneuver that big pan in place. So to do that I'm going to use this Permatex Black, ultra black it's oil resistant and it's a silicone based and uh, it hardens a little and that's what I'm wanting uh, a sealer I used before uh, didn't harden it remained pliable and I think in this case I want something that will harden up some so anyway that's what we're going to do okay we've about got it stripped down our art there is a few changes I am going to have to pull that distributor. There's one very small tip of the pan that is uh, that is being interfered with with the vacuum advance portion. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the distributor. I wanted to show you all what you should do if you ever remove the distributor. Number one, I don't know if you can see. 
Uh, let's get down here and see. But the BB is lined up directly with the pointer. And number one cylinder is on. Sorry about that. Is on compression. So we've got the rotor button lined up, and I've got it marked underneath where number one uh, plug goes to the distributor cap. I put this mark here to show it pretty much perpendicular here to the uh, pan to give a good uh, 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 reference for putting it back together. So anyway, you want to make sure you got your timing marks lined up before you pull that pan uh, distributor I'm sorry and uh, that way when you put it back you can get it real close to where it was I also pulled the fuel line and the vacuum line decided just let's make it real easy all right all right now that I've got it down in the pan off I want to point out a few things that I've got the uh, whole valley exposed here here's the uh, oil line I was talking about now that oil line act goes all the way through the water jacket and comes out on the other side of the block and it connects to the uh, oil distribution valve which uh, actually uh, governs the amount of oil that comes up to the uh, top end here. And uh, you've got to be real careful where it routes by those two push rods as uh, the, when the pan goes on there's very little clearance and I've felt and I don't have any rubbing or my old one did so you've got to be real careful when you make that 90 if you have to replace it and uh and then when you run by those push rods also a lot of oil comes up here to the top end uh through that line distributes through the rocker shafts and out each rocker arm and it drains down through the push rod holes and several holes in the head down into this galley to make its way back down into the uh, crankcase and if you can see down here the lowest spot of the engine there is no hole the closest hole is here so oil is going to puddle here naturally it's going to drain down between the lifter and the bores here but there still be oil puddled here and that's where I was having my major leak there's a drain back there's a drain back there's the drain back. So as you can see, there's a get some light on it here. So as you can see, other than that big large hole there in the middle, you just have those three drain backs to uh, get the oil that's coming from the head back down into the crankcase. So oil is going to puddle, and I believe the engineers wanted it like that in order to uh, lubricate those lifters and uh because they are going up and down in a uh that cast iron bore so that's uh one reason why it's prone to leak another thing i want to point out is you can see this is the uh the block and then you can see the head i sent the head off to have it re uh rebuilt and they refinished it and uh you can see a drastic change in the uh condition and the coloration of it so that block has got over a hundred thousand miles on it the head may be thirteen thousand maybe i think i just turned fourteen thousand on it since i've replaced the head and the pan is over here along with the valve cover and this is the inside of it and you can see there's not a whole lot of room to clear for that oil line. Here's those uh, cork seals for the spark plug holes, which is those. So that's that. Now, there's speculation as to what color these engines were when they came out of the factory. And gray seems to be the uh, common color, uh, consensus on the color. This valve cover has never been painted and as you can plainly see it's black this i found remnants of black on it before i cleaned it down to the condition it's in now and of course it's got a little surface rust on it so i'm of the opinion that this engine was black when it left the uh, factory uh, so if you paint your engine black you're not going to you shouldn't upset the purists all right we're going to clean all this up clean up the uh, block and uh we'll return 
Okay, now I've coated both sides of that gasket and uh, it's been setting for about a half an hour. It should hold now so I can install it. And uh, same with those uh, uh, cork gaskets around the uh, spark plug holes. I cleaned up the rest of the pan a little bit, but I decided not to paint it, just to leave it uh, exactly how it was. You may decide to uh, paint yours when you have it out. Alright, here's the cover installed. Uh, you can see this magnet here. This is what uh, helped hold the tin there while I maneuvered it with the other hand to get it in there. Even with this bracket that runs across the fenders here gone, it's still a tight fit between the firewall and the heater hoses. Very tight, so you, that magnet is a very good idea. Now, these are the two size screwdrivers I mainly used to, uh, for their stove bolts. What I did is I hand started each one, every one of them, finger tight. Now, you don't want to tight them down, tighten them down before you get them all in because pan may have to move just a hair so you get them all in finger tight then you start crisscrossing to tighten them up uh, as tight as you can get them with your hand uh, I started with the back left corner top right corner top left corner bottom right corner two middles and I worked that way around kind of like how you would torque a head and then once I got them as tight as I could by hand I took a pair of channel locks like so and I fit, fit them around the screwdriver like so and I gave it one quarter turn that's just enough to cinch it down okay now there is uh, enough of the gasket sealer on the threads of those uh, stove bolts to, uh, to act as a uh, loctite a form of loctite also uh, the instructions on the uh, uh, RTV said to uh, let it sit 24 hours before you let oil get to it. Well, there's still some oil draining down from the head from uh, because I drove this thing this morning. So it's going to get a little oil on it before that time, but I'm not going to operate it uh, or add oil uh, until uh, sometime tomorrow, 24 hours. So I'm going to start putting the rest of it back together again. Uh, I had adjusted the valves uh, about uh, a month ago. Uh, when I resurfaced them and uh, maybe I should touch on that real quick the valves here the rocker arms they wear on the valve stems and you know after 40 50 60 years they'll they'll wear a trough on, on the tips and those tips what happens is the rocker arm actually sits down a little further on the valve stem uh, in that war spot than it does on the outside so when you stick a feeler gauge in there, you're setting the uh, gap to the uh, unworn section. So basically you could have two, three, four, five, six thousandths additional clearance in that wear. Now, I've heard some, some people come up with a, a very skinny uh, feeler gauge that'll fit in that gap. What I did is I just pulled the, uh, uh, the rocker shafts and the rocker arms and I dressed them up on a grinder. Now they do have a, uh, they're not totally flat. They have a curvature to them. So if you do that, you want to grind in a way to uh, maintain as much of that original uh, uh, curvature as possible. Uh, because that's how they came, that's how they designed, and uh, that's how, what you should do. So try to do that, maintain that. Do not make them flat. Uh, you'll probably never have quiet valve train again if you do that. So anyway, I wanted to touch on that while I had it apart. Also, I touched on in another video about how the uh, oil gets up to the rocker arms. Well, you've seen the line attaches here to the center section. The oil gets up here to this point and it distributes in the, uh, in the rocker shafts here. They're hollow, they're capped at the end, and once they are filled with oil, the holes are in the bottom of the shafts. The oil leaches out of the bottom of the shaft around the rocker and then out this very top weep hole. It may take a couple minutes, up to five minutes, depending upon how long it's been since you've run it, 
before you get good oil. But once oil flows, you get a lot of oil up to these rocker arms. And that oil in turn has to drain down through that pan back down into the crankcase. So hopefully I've uh, slowed that leak down to where uh, I would go out in a 50 mile run, 50, 60 mile run, I'd go through almost a half a quart of oil just leaking it. So uh, I'm running the cheapest oil I can, which is also probably the best, which is a 15W40 for this old uh, engine here. Uh, I still don't like leaving oil all over the place. So anyway, hopefully that slows it down. I'm going to put it back together. And I will do a test start just to make sure everything's good. So be back. All right, here we go. We're all buttoned up. Everything's back together again. Distributor's back on the marks. Should be this very close to time. I'll try it uh, on a road test. If it needs uh, time and light again, we'll do it. Uh, I went ahead and put new plugs in it while I had it down. I uh, set the carburetor up with the vacuum method and it looks like it's running a little on the rich side but it's running so good I believe I'm gonna leave it that way. So anyway, there we go. I'm gonna let it sit overnight, let the gasket sealer set up and uh, then we'll start it in the morning and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> 